Well, you know, I was sitting there thinking, how can I make something that makes all the white people bad and all the black people good? And then I thought, Robin Hood. <laughs> My name is Julian Christian Lutz, PKA Director X. I am the creator, executive producer, and sometimes the director of Robin Hood, which is on global TV and streaming on Stack. Robin Hood is just a young, fun show. So if you enjoy just some good old entertaining, they call it a popcorn movie in the movie side of things, popcorn television, I guess we could call it. Great show to watch with your kids if you have kids. Um, it's, it's really made for that young adult audience and has a little bit of a message. We don't beat you over the head with the message, but community and fighting back against power responsibly are big messages in the show. There's a Bible verse on a mural in the show, and it says, better a close neighbor than a far brother. That's uh, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 10. And that really sums up the number one theme of the show, that community gets you through hardship. Community can get you through anything. And we keep coming back to that community as the core of why Robin is fighting, what gives her the strength to fight, and, um, ultimately is what protects the neighborhood from the powers of a corrupt state, the police and a rich man that has control over the city. And stay out of Sherwood. Bu, 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 bu. Woo! <laughs> in the real world, not in conspiracy world. In the real world, you just have an idea one day. One day I had an idea. What if we did modern day Robin Hood? And my original idea was gonna be like really, uh, kind of like a bunch of men come back from war and they're gonna, you know, and then film and television, these things are a process of bringing on partners. So even if you wrote it, you still need a producer. You still need, then you need a studio. Then you need, and for television, you need a production company. Then you need a broadcaster. And there's all these people who start joining on. So before the production company came in and before the broadcaster came in, I had producers that were partners and were developing the story. And one of these producers brought in a writer and he pitched, what if Robin was a girl? He spelled it with a Y, and what if they make music? And I liked what that did. It made it very young in comparison to my super testosterone, like 18 meets 24 meets Robin Hood version. So I said, I like what that is, but imagine, like I said, immediately made it young, kind of like CW would be a way for people to wrap their head around it. And I liked it, so I made the decision to uh, shift the show from being just a modern Robin Hood right, and so serious to this young, fun version. Finally break a thousand views lit? Uh-huh, when I get it up, it's gonna be huge. <laughs> what? Say that again. Yo, pop, pop. Oh, it's gonna be huge? <laughs> Yo, allow it fam, allow it. No, we made it, it wasn't until it came out, but look, these guys, they're hypersensitive now. This uh, anti-woke nerd community. Um, so at this point, any mention of changing gender or changing race or, or, or they just, they, they lose it. In our mind, they just lost it. So I wouldn't say it's a pressure. We're just making the show the best show we can make. We were not approaching it with uh, anything in mind. I wasn't trying to prove to the world about black women and empower and the police and the, well, that's not like the, the cops are bad guys because it's Robin Hood. There's a sheriff involved and a prince. The bad guy's a rich guy because He's a prince, like I'm adapting the legend, right? But they, they the, this nerd community went into it, went into it to hate it. And mind you, this is a teenage show. This is a 14 plus show. This is not, if you like Batman punching a criminal's face into oblivion and then like driving a car through a fireball, you don't, you shouldn't be watching Robin Hood. It's a low budget Canadian young adult show. If you're 14, yes, this is your show. 14, 15, high school, uh, pretty people uh, with superpowers kind of show. You know what I mean? Doing little adventures. This this is your show. This is not the show to come in and get super serious about, but they came in and got super serious. Why are they wearing light up masks? 
because they're like hood Power Rangers. Why are you concerned? What are you doing here? They've, no one's ever really pointed out. It's weird you're watching like a 14 year old show really seriously. Like you're in your 30s and in your 40s, bro. And then like really angry about it on top of it. I got way more questions about you than I do about my show. You know, look, my friend calls it Hood Power Rangers and that's probably the best way to describe what's going on in the show, right? They're wearing color coordinated costumes. They have animal masks that light up with LED lights, like, and they have the lights on while they do the robbery. <laughs> you know, so, so once you make these costumes, once you, again, this starts from who are we making this for? It's a young adult show. It's a normie show, as the nerds would say. It's a normie show. So then you start getting into, all right, we're gonna do these animal masks, they're gonna light up, it's gonna color coordinate with their ponchos, which help hide their body, because you know, if there's a woman, then you, you, know, you can't wear skin tight stuff when that's that situation. So we're doing stuff like that, because it's fun and it's cool. And uh, that's really kind of what this all comes down to. I just saw, a review is some kid, some father and his son were talking about which show did you like better? Did you like Lupin or Robin Hood? He said, like, I liked Robin Hood. Well, why did you like Robin Hood? I like the costumes. And that's the target audience for the show. You should be watching Robin Hood with your kid. It's that kind of show. It's, it's, it's got enough edge to it that it's fun. Like you've grown out of straight up kid shows and you're moving your way into more high school, we allude to sex, people are in relationships, maybe there's a gun involved. That's what Robin Hood is. Which again comes up right back to why are grown ass men watching this show angrily <laughs> and making YouTube videos about every episode? <laughs> I mean, but it's a, like I said, it's a, it's a backlash to woke, what they feel is like this woke culture push which I think everyone can understand that we've definitely entered this new phase um, and pendulum swing, right? You're, you're trying to let everyone get a chance to play. And for the kid who was on the field the most, it can feel like they're being excluded when someone says pass the ball, right? And I think that is, you have an element of that going on. And then there's just a little bit of like this, all these people all lean a little right, a little libertarian, a little conservative. So you have some of those views mixed in there, along with feeling like someone's stealing the thing they love from them. So it's, it's a lot of different factors going on, but you know, at its core, it's a young adult show. When we decided it was gonna be a woman, we wanted Robin to be a young woman who lives in the projects. They live at the corner of Sherwood and Forest which for the Toronto people watching this, I really based a lot of that language on Jane and Finch, right? We have this neighborhood out here, then Jane and Finch, are you from Jane and Finch? Growing up, is you heard a lot of talk about Jane and Finch, but being from Jane and Finch doesn't mean you're directly on the corner of Jane and Finch. It encompasses the entire neighborhood. So they'll say the Jane and Finch community. So Robin lives in the Sherwood and Forest community, right? They're at the corner of Sherwood and Forest or the Sherwood Towers. So she's in the projects. All right, well, there is a little bit of race involved in that, to be very realistic. In Canada and in England, yes, there are a lot of white families that live in public housing. But it makes sense to say, all right, we want a black or Latina to play this role. So we opened it up. We saw black women, mixed race women, Latinas. And then Jessie Romeo, who's a Canadian on her mother's side, uh, got the role. You know, she just, she had it. She had everything we're looking for. Then the rest of the crew, when we wrote it, I'm going to be very honest, I wrote it like a young adult show. It was going to be a multicultural group of kids. There was going to be, uh, Robin could be black or Latina. She ended up being black. Cool. Uh, we always thought, we thought Little John would be black. We thought Much would be black or mixed race. Uh, we thought Alan would be white. And we thought Tuck would be Latino. And they're written in the script that way. Then we're seeing all these actors and Idrissa comes in for Alan and he just, not only has this look and the, this charm, just this likability, and we said, we, let's go with him. Y'all ready? Let's go. You ready? Do it. Make some noise, baby. So now Alan becomes black. And Tuck, Jonathan comes in, he just, he's got the look, he's got the sense of humor, he's got the charisma as well, he's got that thing. Well, that's because you only see the meat. One day my mind will arise to a plane of pure logic. 
So now Tuck is black. So I was there saying, all right, um, well, let's, uh, let's make Little John white. And we came in, we had, a, we had a chemistry test, we had a white actor, a black actor, and then Nakeem, who's mixed race, black. Um, and Nakeem won it. Again, the look, the charm, the, just that thing. So it organically grew into all the merry men were black. The same thing on the sheriff's side. John Prince, we did say we wanted him to be white. And the reason we wanted that to be is because he was, in the original legend, Prince John is literally a prince. So he has lineage of being, he's old money. So we wanted to play homage to that old money and the reality of North America is unless you're white, you aren't part of the old money train. So uh, Prince John became that. I think one of the easy things for us to have done would be make him a kind of Donald Trumpish kind of character. I decided to make him Richard Branson. And then the sheriff, we saw all races again. We saw black, we saw Asian, we saw, we saw every single race. But Kira nailed it. She just had what we needed the sheriff to be. And she's terrific. So then our two main villains became white and our main bad guys became black. It wasn't how we walked into it. And if you're looking at the show through that lens, you know, where you're angry and want to hate the show, well, then you're gonna start talking that way. But it organically became that thing. And, uh, you know, what's interesting for me, for a group of angry nerds, and I'm an angry nerd too, so don't take it personal. But for a bunch of angry nerds to be so upset that on television, the white people are bad, I asked them to have some empathy for a community of people that in real life, they're the bad guys. When they go outside, they're the bad guys. They're the actual bad guys in the actual world. Maybe your anger at the kids show is a little misplaced or maybe overdone. The biggest difference between a music video and a long form is just how many days it takes to do it. A music video is a one day, two day, maybe a three day thing, depending on the artist you're working with. A television show, if, even if you're just, uh, say, an episodic director, you're gonna be doing maybe two episodes, a block is what they call it. You get two episodes, you shoot it as a block. And if it's seven days per episode, you got 14 days, but you'd be shooting. If, say, episode eight, there's a scene in the kitchen, and episode seven, there's a scene in the kitchen, well, you shoot both those kitchen scenes together. This is the operation. And then a movie, you know, those can be 17 days. I shot, uh, my first film was an indie, that was 15 days. Um, my second film was 38. Big, big Hollywood productions. You can be shooting 180 days. These things take a lot of time. So that's really the big difference between the short form world of music, video, and commercial versus the long form uh, film and television. I think almost everybody in the current world growing up in the age of music video has at one point wrapped a song in the mirror like they're in a music video. So it's just kind of part of what the culture is. So we didn't have to like put, we didn't have to get like a movement coach for the, for the actors to pretend they were rappers. Like that wasn't something we had trouble with. Well, you know, if you're shooting a music video, you're shooting music video. I need a performance and I need cutaways. At minimum, when you're putting these things together, you need something of them singing the song and then, um, something to cut to normally, right? So I don't know, they're hanging out by a car, drinking beer in front of the convenience store. But then the performance is gonna be them in the convenience store walking down the hall. Just a random music video idea. Robin Hood, I don't need cutaways. The cutaways need to serve the narrative. So I have shots of them performing, but I know I can cut to Alan with the camera because I need to establish that they're filming it on their phone. They're just some kids making their own music video, super lo-fi. Uh, also have to factor in when the cops show up, then when are they, you know what I mean? So the music video in Robin Hood, especially that one, since it's so tied to the narrative, is important. Um, later in the episode, you get a normal music video. And that's, you know, them, that gets in, here's performance, here's a cutaway uh, type of stuff. When this, 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 I find my philosophy is that you embrace the troubles, you embrace the difficulties, you embrace all this stuff, and it actually will guide you to where the show is supposed to be. So when the show was originally written, I wanted St. Jamestown downtown, that's, that's Shoreborn and Wesley, Bleaks. I wanted that to be um, 
uh, Sherwood and Forest. I wanted that to be the neighborhood. Budget-wise, it just wasn't possible. We had to shoot our exteriors in Hamilton to make our tax credits work. So now we're in Hamilton and we have a conversation. Well, okay, well, we can make Hamilton look like Toronto. And then I said, no, let's not try to make it be Toronto because one, it never will be. But beyond that, let's embrace this being a small city, which will help explain why this police department doesn't have all the bells and whistles. You can imagine how hard it must be to be a criminal nowadays with cameras everywhere and AI and facial recognition. And there's all this technology that can read license plates and there's tech, there's programs that can recognize the way you walk. So uh, being a criminal doing heists and television heists, not just we robbed someone coming home. No, no, we broke into a penthouse mansion and stole gold coins from the richest man in town like we're, we're, it's kid shit so you have to have some form of believability we need to be able to at least give you a reason why you're not showing up with helicopters and you know what a big city has at their disposal so by embracing this small city we are able to say it's a small city that doesn't have the money to be a big city to police department and now that can also be a motivation for the sheriff so new nottingham is like hamilton and it lives in the shadow of Mercia, right? And I'm sure every kid that's hitting college age in Hamilton, or at least not every kid, but a lot of those kids are like, man, I'm moving to Toronto. I can't wait to get out of this place, right? It's just a reality. So we, we work that into Robin wants to move to the big city and there's all kinds of stuff happening in the big city. And part of the motivation of John Prince to tear down Sherwood and Forest or tear down the Sherwood Towers is you have all these people that can't afford to live in Mercia and they could live over here. So we, we have all these conversations going on, all this stuff happening. And um, again, it happened by embracing the difficulties, embracing the struggles that were coming to us from the budget. I wouldn't say any videos, I mean, in my, um, I, I did a school project where I took a spoken word piece and shot something. But in my work work, it's not so much that just you're, you as an artist, especially when you're into different, maybe you paint and maybe you make music and maybe you like to sing and maybe you add all the different arts that you're interested in, but you make your money from say filmmaking and some, maybe you're a cinematographer or you're a director or you're a writer. It's not so much that you're directly taking a song that you wrote and putting it directly into the thing as much as that sensibility of music, that sensibility of dance. That's what all these different things feed into your worldview, into, into your artistic approach. And they all just, happen as opposed to trying to make things happen who would play me i have no idea i don't know who's like super handsome and sexy some really gorgeous gorgeous man just muscles and just exudes sex appeal and but still like mysterious right and intelligent like he's intelligent sexy intelligent but like a loner kind of like a Leave me alone, kid. I got stuff to do. Maybe he speaks with a little bit of a rasp. Right? You know what I'm saying? Maybe, if, if in my version, maybe the opening shot is I'm kind of putting first aid on my own wound, right? Something's happened, something. Maybe I was helping out some old lady there trying to mug her and I had to take on maybe four or five guys all on my own. And, you know, I'm wrapping the wound up and there's like some kid goes, hey, mister, some, something, something. I'm gonna leave me alone, kid. You don't want to get involved with a guy like me. And then I pull it, but it's really painful, but I go, gotta take the pain. I'm gonna like stitch myself. I'm like stitching my own wound, right? As a kid, come on, mister, let me hang out with you. Get out of here, kid. But probably down the line, the kid gets kidnapped. And then you see that I really do care because I gotta save the kid and then take on the guy. You know what I'm just saying? So yeah, that would be my defining X. Well, I mean, again, every, everything varies. If this was like premium television and it was gonna go on A&E, it might be a, uh, 35 mil down the hall, slowly creeping down as sun shines in through the window and I'm sitting in the back, sitting on a, maybe a piano stool in front of a piano and there's a classical music playing and I'm, if that was say premium television. If it was a little more young and fun, maybe I wanna show energy. So there's a, again, another 35 mil, but I'm way closer, right? I'm way closer to the subject. I'm just on the other side of a door. And boom, the door opens up and I come rushing in and the camera dollies back and, and as I walk past the camera, the camera pans with me in big energy and then we reveal the house and I go in and start working furiously at the thing I'm, I got, I'm 
I'm a genius and I got so much stuff on my mind and I boom and boom and he puts the stuff down. He starts to draw out the idea. You feel what I'm saying? And then maybe we're right over the shoulder as we see what he's drawing. Um, if it was maybe more down the line television, well, I don't know, maybe it's a 35 on a dolly and we're just doing a little pushing, as I said, at the kitchen table, uh, you know, watching the news, right? Maybe a little lower than normal, right? Something like that. You see what I'm saying? There's a, there's, there's a visual language for the type of show you're shooting that does not work for the other, right? A&E doesn't want the wide lens, real close, super action-y, um, and the slow move down the hall as I sit in the light. Doesn't work for, like, Robin Hood. So my style and the way I do things changes depending on the need of the show, which should always be what's most important. I am Julian Christian Lutz, PKA Director X. I am the creator, executive producer, and sometimes director of Robin Hood. With a Y, because it's a girl. Get it? Robin with a, because it's a girl. <laughs>